Hi guys. Happy Wednesday. I am Rita. I'm the design director from Impress Art. Um, I'm coming to you from home and I'm on Long Island in New York. Um, so we are basically social distancing. We're all working from home. Okay, so we're gonna get started. So like I said, we're gonna work with the crystal setter today. We had a lot of uh, questions come in about um, when you're working with the softer metals and you're leaving your impression um, that the metal buckles on the side. I'm gonna show you how to fix that um, and how to stop it from happening moving forward. Also, the bouncing on the brass and the copper the way you position your hands and how you press down on your stamp helps a tremendous amount. So we're gonna walk through that and go over it. So in that crystal setter kit are three crystal setters. The first one is a 1.8, the second is a 2.5, and the third is a four millimeter. And yes, the four millimeter is a little bit, um, uh, a little bit more difficult to use in the brass and the copper, but I'm gonna walk you through that today. And you will have no problem next time you're sitting down to create with it. Definitely pay attention to you know what I'm gonna do here today. So when you do take it out and work on it, it's gonna be super easy for you to do, okay? You are gonna use what we have is GS Hypo. That's gonna be the adhesive you're gonna use. Um, I know a lot of questions now um, just coming in about crazy glue. So the thing with crazy glue is it off gases. So what it does is once you put the crazy glue in and you place your crystal in, it gives a haze over your crystal, which is off gassing, okay? And it makes it very, very, very dull. So we suggest um, using GS Hypo. And I have a couple of um, good tips for that because I know um, some people's comments came in that they're opening up the GS Hypo and it's oozing. So first and foremost, foremost, if you're gonna make along with me today, I want you to make, want to make sure that you're not squeezing that glue. You're gonna leave it and you're just gonna take that applicator out right when we're ready to set your crystals and I'm gonna explain to you why. So we're gonna start, I'm gonna bring you over to my bench. Okay, so here are, the crystal setters and like I said there are three of them so the first one is the smallest one in your package and that is the 1.8 the second one is the medium size and that's gonna be your 2.5 and the larger one is your four millimeter and it seems to um, safe to say that we've gotten um, some questions about the four millimeter, but I'm gonna walk you through from the smallest one and troubleshoot some of them. Um, the kit comes with three size crystals. So you have your 1.8, your 2.5, and your four millimeter crystals. I just have a fancy jar, a little sneak peek of what's to come. I'm also gonna incorporate, I'm gonna to use today, I'm gonna to use our multi-function hammer and the reason why I'm gonna use this is I'm gonna use the nylon head and I'm gonna show you um, how to use it when it comes to flattening out your metals. And we're also gonna use our sanding block, okay? And here is my GS Hypo. So I'm gonna start with the smallest one. So this is an alchemy disc and I went ahead and I stamped a name on it. Um, that seems to be the number one application. I have a brown marker, let's do a black, some paper towel. So I stamped a name on it. I'm just gonna enamel that so you could see it. Little tip with the enamel. What you wanna do is you want to make it messy and then clean it up, lightly wipe it, okay? If your enamel's not staying in your impression, it's because the either you're wiping, wiping it too quick or um, your impressions aren't deep enough. So I'm gonna pull out my Argo Angle Hammer. So I'm gonna start with my um, 1.8 uh, crystal setter. And 
Usually the application is you put your personalization and then you could use the birthstone either before or after the name, okay? So I'm going to place that crystal setter right after the name, okay? I'm gonna take my hammer and I'm gonna lightly give a couple of taps. And if you notice, I'm actually, as I'm hitting it, I'm turning my shank, but I'm firmly putting pressure on that stamp. And I am just rotating it. And there's my divot. So the reason why I don't overly hit it when you're using this and you really give it gusto, it one gets stuck and it two leaves cupping. Okay. And that's not what you want. You don't want that cupping. Um, you are going to get minimal when you are lightly turning and hitting. The reason why we turn it, we rotate it, and we hit it is because it's nice and even. Your indentation, your divot, is nice and even on all sides. So your crystal is actually going to sit inside of a cup um, rather than um, rather than having one, one, one side deep and the other side just, you know, your of your crystal just sticking out. So you want to make sure that you're nice. And even on your metal, you're pressing down on it. You have your hammer and you're gently tapping in a circular motion. You're moving your stamp and you're hitting, okay? So even with that, it buckles a little bit over here and it kind of starts to cup. I don't know if you guys could see that. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to flatten it. And then I'm going to show you how to give it a little bit of a sanding um, with our um, sanding block to get that right back into shape. So that's why I am using my nylon head in my multifunction hammer. I'm going to tighten the end. I'm going to take that and I'm just going to lightly give it a few taps, lightly. And remember, you're working, what I'm working with here is Alchemy. Same goes for aluminum. They're both very soft materials. So you're gonna see that it's nice and flat now on both sides. And the reason why we suggest using the nylon head is that it doesn't mar the metal when you hit it. So then you see that you have a little bit of a dimple here. What I like to do is I like to take the coarse side of my buffing block and I just like to knock that side down a little bit. And you're gonna see that you're good to go. And then you could finish it off with the buffing just to smooth that side down. So you'll see how we knocked it and we smoothed it, okay? So with that being said, I'm going to take one of my crystals out. Okay, GS Hypo. I love, love, love this glue. You're just gonna open it, do not squeeze it. And you're gonna see how without even squeezing it, it makes a ball right on the top. You're gonna take that with the tip, okay? And you're gonna place it right inside that impression, okay? Then you're going to put that pin right back through that hole. So it's funny that I, I got it to work this time because every time I'm like, oh, try to make it look easy, it never works, so. It worked for me today. Then you're gonna take a pair of tweezers and you're just going to pick up your crystal. And we have a great pair of tweezers also. Um, and then you're just gonna literally put your stone right in there. And that's how it's gonna look. 
Now, if your glue goes over a little bit, that's okay. I wouldn't touch it. What I would do is wait until it dries. You could take some paper towel with a little bit of alcohol, rubbing alcohol or antibacterial um, for your hands and just lightly wipe it away. It will come off. So instead of really making a mess while it's, it's wet and it starts to go all over the place, you just wanna take a paper towel, a little bit of rubbing alcohol and clean around it. Okay, so that's when you're working with either the aluminum or the alchemy, okay? Um, now, same goes for the medium size. You're gonna place it down, take your hammer. Remember, press down on it, give it a hit, and then in a circular motion, keep on tapping it. This is gonna distribute the weight evenly, okay? So really there's nothing to it with this, okay? The four millimeter, the four millimeter, again, you want to, with working with the aluminum and the Alchemy, you still want to press very hardly on it, okay? Take your hammer, same thing, hit it once, and then you're going to rotate that stamp, still pressing on that stamp, and it's gonna give you a nice divot mark, okay? A nice deep impression, so it's gonna lay in there perfectly. And also, you do the same thing. Take your nylon hammer, flip that over, give it a couple of hits, okay? Um, and it'll, it'll nice, it'll smooth it right out and you'll have a flat surface. Um, and then you're gonna repeat your glue. Now that's for a soft metal. When you go up in size and you're working with your brass and your copper, you're going, it's the same thing as if you're stamping words into brass and copper. It's always a little bit more challenging. Um, so I'm gonna work with the 2.5. And again, I'm going to press down, take my hammer, hit it once, and then with a little bit more gusto, I'm gonna circle in a circular motion with my stamp. I'm going to get a really nice and even impression in that. So again, you want to hit it once, nice solid strike. Then I want you to start tilting in a circular motion. So you're not really moving your hammer all around it, you're moving your stamp and you're still putting pressure on that. And that's gonna leave a really nice divot, um, a nice and deep, uh, to put your crystal in. Now, the four, like I said, is still a little bit challenging, okay? You're gonna do the same thing. You're really gonna take it, anchor your hand, okay? Half of stamping well is knowing how to anchor your hand. So you're going to press down, okay? Once you've lined up where you want your crystal to go, I want you to give it a nice aggressive hit, and then you're going to, again, circular motion. Now, I obviously do this a lot, so I don't need to ta tape my blank down, but if you are unsure and it's moving underneath you, feel free to take our tape and just put it on the put it right underneath or wherever you feel comfortable. Okay? And again, so I'm going to place it down, hit it once. Now you see that I'm using force. And really just in a circular motion. And you have really nice indent indents. If you're just gonna hit it once, you're not gonna have such a deep impression. So by creating that circular motion, you really get that depth. Okay? So this was me just hitting it once. 
this is my circular motion. So you could see how nice and deep and even that impression becomes. So same thing with the brass, uh, the copper, sorry. You're going to, again, give it a nice hit. And then continue to, in a circular motion, rotate your stamp around while hitting it. And you're gonna get a nice and even impression. I'll work with the medium too. And then the 1.5. Now you don't have to be as aggressive with the smaller one. The smaller one is smaller. It cuts through the metal easier, the 1.8 that I'm talking about right now. Okay, so you'll see that it's, it's easier to use. When you're working on a piece, and I'll go back to this, um, like we did with the Sam. Let's say we're stamping on the edge just for people who just turned in. Um, I will. Stamp a name. So you're working on the outskirts of your blank. When you're working on the outskirts, let me color that in so you can see. I'm dabbing it, lightly wiping it. Okay. When you want to use the crystal on the outskirts of it, I don't suggest going all the way to the bottom of your crystal, of your blank. You wanna go right in the middle of the word that you just finished or the name. So I'm gonna use my middle of my N. I'm going to give it one hit in a circular motion. Give it a nice, a nice hit right there. So you're gonna see that it's nice and even. If you go closer to the bottom of your blank, you're gonna have a little bit of um, metal popping out because don't forget, you're forging metal. You're forging steel into copper, into brass, into alchemy, into aluminum. Um, so it's going to spread. So you're gonna get a little bit of a, um, more of a, I, I like to consider it a pucker right there. Um, it's not noticeable with this one, if it is noticeable, um, in the beginning of the video, I um, use the sanding block. You just wanna take it and give it a couple of, just a little bit, little, little elbow grease, and it knocks it right down, okay? And then you could come back in with your fine grip buffing block, and you won't be able to see the difference. Okay, so with the glue, remember, there's no reason to squeeze this. It's gonna come out, do you see how? Let me actually clean that off so I could, you could actually see it. Okay. So I'm not squeezing it and you see how that bubble of glue just comes out? That's what you're gonna use, you're gonna take it and then put it right into that divot that you made, okay? And then you could always use, I like to, my friend Wyatt at Beetle On told me that I should work with a wet sponge. Um, and then at the end, when I'm done, I could just wipe it on the sponge and it'll be nice and clean. So for those of you who um, wanna take care of your glue, um, I tend to be a little bit messy. That is definitely a personality flaw of mine. Um, 
but definitely you can even use paper towel, same paper towel that um, you're doing with your uh, enamel. Um, just make sure that it's your last step, um, wiping that glue. If you get um, an crazy amount of glue um, and it's coming out of your divot, okay, you can use a paper towel with some rubbing alcohol or um, I always have antibacterial hand sanitizer um, close by, especially these in, in these times, you could always take it, give it a little bit, um, a squirt on there and lightly wipe it. It's going to take any of the glue that you have around your crystal off, okay? So I'm just gonna walk you through it one more time. Let's take a crystal out. So these crystals come, they are birth crystals. You don't have to use them as birth crystals if you don't want. Um, you're going to take your glue out. So you're gonna take that bead, you're going to place it, let's use the brass. You're gonna place it right inside that divot. Do you see how I'm filling that up and I'm using the tip of that glue cap? Okay, then like I said, you're gonna wipe it on a wet sponge or just use your paper towel, close it. Then you're going to take your tweezers, okay? And you're gonna place it right inside that divot, just like that. And again, if you have excess glue that's coming out, we, I would wait until it's dry and then use that um, alcohol or antibacterial to clean up around it. I don't suggest using any kind of crazy glue or Gorilla Glue because that off gases. Um, with that being said, you're gonna have a crystal and it's gonna have a haze over it. So to keep your crystals nice and, sh and shiny, you want to definitely use GS Hypo. Okay. So our bracelet blanks have that protective coating on it. So I'm gonna peel that off, okay? So again, I'm gonna use my sticker guide. I'll paste that there. Okay, and I'm gonna use whatever I have on my blocks. So that's an uppercase juniper. So you're gonna stamp your name or your quote, or any of the design. That you are creating. You can, it's, it's completely personal preference. If you leave the plastic on the back, it will reduce the marring on the back of your blank. Completely up to you, total personal preference, whether you wanna take it or leave it on. So I am going to, you can mark with your marker where you want your crystal. I am just gonna use that line from the center of the E and line that up. So once I've marked it, again, I'm gonna give it a hit and lightly in a circular motion, make my indentation, okay? Okay, so you're going to put your divot in, you're gonna stamp, design your piece, and then you're gonna use your bracelet bending, bending bar. So once you've bent it with the bar, you're gonna take it from the center, just give it that little squeeze and go around it, I'm gonna form it. Pull that out just like that. I like mine oval, so that's why I pull it out a little bit. So after you have it formed, 
you're going to drop your crystal inside of it. So I'm going to open my glue, wait for it to ball without squeezing it. So that ball of glue, if you see that ball of glue right there, I'm just gonna take that with the tip, place that inside going to wipe that off put my cap back on and then I'm going to let's see oh there's my crystal I'm going to take my crystal Let's see, I have a little bit of a delay, so let's see if you could see that. I'm going to place that right inside that divot and move it with the tip of my tweezers. So there is your bracelet. So the same thing when you're making the rings, you want to stamp all of your impressions. You want to make the divot for your crystal and then you're going to bend it and then you're gonna place your glue and put your crystals right inside of there. Like I said, when you're stamping, you definitely want to anchor your hand, especially with the two larger sizes. You wanna make sure that you're pressing on that shank, okay? Pressing it into the metal taking your hammer, giving it a nice aggressive tap when it comes to the four millimeter. And then you want to, in a circular motion, you're gonna move your stamp. And you're gonna give it nice taps all around. Okay, so um, what the difference, what's the difference between tilt and tap and the circular motion that I'm doing? Um, the reason why I'm doing a more of a circular motion with this is because our indentations are circular. Okay, and there is, um, there really is no detail in this stamp. Would you tumble before fitting the stone in? Cindy, yes. I would um, tumble everything and then place your stones in. Okay, it, that's just how I do it. Um, with the tumbling, with the medium that you have, um, the problem is, is that let's say you're working with a stainless steel shot. That stainless steel is gonna run over these crystals and take the facets out of them. So definitely, definitely, definitely um, tumble it without your stones in. How close together would you set the gems? There is a tutorial on the um, inspiration page about um, drawing with your crystals. I'm a big fan of it. Let me actually grab a disc. Okay, so I like to, draw with my crystals. So let's say I'm doing a heart, okay? And there is, in this inspiration gallery, there's a keychain that I made, and there is a step-by-step -step tutorial on um, how to do that. But I am going to do it live for you now. So I am going to just draw a heart on my blank with my enamel marker, okay? When I draw my heart, I always like to start at my points first. So I like to use the smaller 1.8, okay? I'm gonna start right in the crown of my heart, give it a nice hit, circular motion all around, and pull it out. The bottom tip of my heart, I'm gonna hit it, circular all around. Now, you don't wanna set them too close together because what starts to happen is that everything starts to spread and cup. But when you use your nylon head, I'm gonna finish this heart and then I'll, I'll walk you through it. But when you use your nylon head, you'll be able to um, flatten it out again. So I'm gonna continue. To follow the lines that I drew with my enamel marker. And we're 
work around it. And you're gonna see that, see how it's cupping? Do you see how, let's see if you could see that. All right, there's nothing wrong with that. You're forming and you're forging metal. So when you're forging metal, it starts to spread. So we're going to, I'm gonna show you a way on how to fix that. I'm gonna get some really close together. see the difference okay so you see that I did one after another here and then I spaced them out more okay this is just to give you an idea on how close you can put your um, crystals so now that I have this cupping I'm gonna take it I'm gonna place it flat on my bench block. I'm gonna take my nylon head um, from the multifunction hammer and I'm gonna lightly give it a couple of nice hits. Not too aggressive. Just a couple of taps till you see that your metal is nice and flat, okay? Now I am going to just clean that off, clean that enamel off. I'm actually going to fill in the divots really quick so you could see how close I got them because if I glue all my crystals in, it's, this will take forever. Gonna give it one more actually. So you could see how close you could get these crystals together. Okay? You can spread them out, you can put them very close. I just would, I would watch out how close you go because you don't want your metal from the divot that you placed above to kind of kick back into the last impression that you made. If that does happen, okay, and I don't know if you could really see that there, um, it's kind of cupping into the last, um, impression that I did. You could always take your crystal setter, go right back in it, just give it a couple of taps and it'll fix the problem. Okay, so I'm just going to set these crystals really quick for you just so you could see, um, get a little bit of inspiration for the next project that you're working on. So I'm gonna set colors actually. I'm not gonna glue, I'm just going to place them in to show you how close together you could get them. Now we're working, what I just pulled out was Alchemy. Um, so it's a soft metal When you're working in the brass and the copper, it's gonna be a little bit more challenging. You can see how close you could get these together. And again, um, if you go on impressart.com on that inspiration page, um, there is a full tutorial of a key ring that I did um, using the crystals and a drawn heart. Okay, so tumbling is just another way of deboring. 
so it just finishes up off your end your your ends of your metal um and it gives it a more polished look now remember guys you could even use this crystal setter if you have a pendant that is made of pewter and it's nice and soft you can embellish it using these crystals also and working with your um your crystal setters so like i said just make sure that you know that it's pewter if you know that it's pewter or if you know if you have a pendant that's brass and it has a flat side to it you could definitely use this crystal setter um, just to give it a little bit more bling and who doesn't love bling so with that being said go i can't tell you to go home and create because i don't know if all of you are working and watching this from work but if you are home like i am definitely take out your stamps take out your crystal setters and show us what you're making i want to see tag us hashtag us um we would love 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 to see love to see what you're making um be safe be healthy stay con connected to your community stamp for your friends drop them in the mail drop them off at your neighbor's house just make someone happy today pay it forward so thank you so much for uh, watching this with me. Um, and I hope we did our best to answer all the questions that you had. If you are you know, working on something and you're having an issue, please feel free to send us a private message um, on Facebook, or you could even DM us on Instagram or send us an email and we'll be more than happy to answer back. Thank you guys so much. See you soon.